Welcome back to Valley Sports Replay. I'm Ezra Broder, and we're joined in studio now by the UMass head football coach, Kevin Morris. Coach, thanks for being here. Hey, my pleasure. Only one week, one week from today, uh, training camp starts for you guys. You must be pumped. Yeah, we're, we're very excited right now. I mean, I was on the, heard on the radio this morning Tom Brady talking, and the camps are starting in the NFL, and, uh, and we're up next a week from today. Coach, this is your second year now at UMass as the head coach. How is this offseason different from last year, being the head man? One more year of experience for you. Sure. I mean, it's completely different. I mean, last year we were just getting the ball rolling and trying to get things done, uh, you know, kind of you know, making it my own last fall. Now, after a year and a whole other recruiting class, I really think, think I have my finger on the pulse of it, and I, I think we're ready to go. Of course. Now, the big off-season storyline in college football, in 1A at least, was the conference realignments, lots of talk like that. Kind of got unnoticed a little bit, but a couple of schools left the CAA. How does that affect your season? Well, it, it certainly affect, affects football in general, and, and particularly in Wonderboy football here in the Northeast. You know, Northeastern dropped football and Hofstra in two separate, you know, individual decisions for their individual schools. But it does affect our league. And we, we did have a 12-team league. We're down to 10. But we do have Old Dominion and Georgia State coming back in uh, the next couple of years. So we'll be back to a 12-team league. But for us, it's, uh, it, it's the same CAA. It's tough as ever. You know, now it's just 1 through 10 as opposed to 1 through 12. And, of course, it helps you out a little bit because you can almost pick at some of the players who, who uh, were at those schools. You got some transfers from those two schools left as well as a lot of incoming fresh and freshmen. How are they going to help your team this season? Well, absolutely going to help. So, I mean, very unfortunate those teams dropped the sport, but uh, at the same time we were able to, to make some hay there with Greg Nile, the left tackle out of Northeastern, who's just going to be a senior, um, as well as John Griffin, the all-league tailback out of Northeastern. He's coming in. Chad Hunt from Northeastern as well as a freshman. And all three guys saw playing time last year and two of them were senior starters and with great careers going at Northeastern so they'll be able to help us just one year but they're certainly going to have an impact on us this year. You lost a lot of experience from last year's team including Vladimir Dukas on the offensive line. It's a bit of a younger team this season. What are your expectations for, for the UMass football team? Uh, well, our expectations every year are to win a national championship and that hasn't changed in 2010. We're going to be a young team uh, but the whole maturity issue I think is going to come to realization in a hurry here because our first three games are William and Mary, who's a, a contender, you know, national semifinalist last year. They're ranked at number one in one of the polls already this year. Uh, Holy Cross is our game two, and they were a playoff team last year as well. And then game three is in the big house at Michigan. So, you know, it's going to be important for our guys to understand, hey, there is no, like, feeling the season out. we got to come ready to go. So our preseason is going to be critical. Well, let's talk about that Michigan game that you mentioned. The big house seats over 110,000 people. Now, a couple years, of course, Appalachian State from 1AA knocked off Michigan in the big house. Are you going to use that as motivation for your guys? Well, I think Michigan certainly is for their guys. Uh, you know, App State kind of blew it for all of us with the Michigan thing because now, you know, they're not going to be sleeping. They're going to be wide awake knowing that UMass is coming to town, a team that's going to be capable of beating them. So they're going to be ready to go. And for our guys, that certainly, hey, the App State thing, they're well aware of it, and they're going to use that as, hey, we can get this done. Playing against New Hampshire, always big for UMass. This year, it, it's, it's almost escalated a little bit because you guys start a series at Gillette Stadium, the first college game at Gillette Stadium. How big is that for, for New England and for the state of Massachusetts? Well, I tell you, it's big for the state of Massachusetts. It's great for our, you know, our team, number one, to go down to Gillette and, and showcase UMass, and we'll get all the state high school guys down there and, uh, at a 3.30 afternoon start at Gillette. So you know, having it be UNH is great, too, because it's a rivalry game for us, and uh, it's still just UNH when we get down to Gillette. But I think the venue is going to be fantastic, and all, you know, all the UMass alums in the Boston area are going to come on down to the game, so it should be a great atmosphere to play in for our guys. Well, again, training camp just one week from today. It starts in September 3rd, UMass Football Weekly, right here on CBS3 Springfield with head coach Kevin Morris and Josh Maurer as your host. That's starting up pretty soon. Coach, thanks for joining us. Hey, my pleasure. Thanks for having us down, and uh, it's football's here. All right. You heard it from Kevin Morris. <laughs> thanks for watching us here on Valley Sports Replay, and as we say goodbye, take a look at our plays of the week.